Hello everyone and welcome to this session on social work interview prep as part of our ACER application event. We're joined by Matthew Quaife and he'll be running this session. If you have any questions, please pop them in the Q&A button in the bottom of your screen and we'll get to answering them at the end of the session. But without further ado, I'll now pass over to Matthew. Thank you very much, Anjali. Welcome everyone to Middlesex University and to this um, uh, one hour slot that we have um, to prepare you for your social work application via UCAS and specifically tonight, um, some tips for your social work interview. So my name is Matthew Quaife. I'm a social work lecturer here at Middlesex. I've been at Middlesex since uh, 2016 and my professional background um, was in mental health social work. I was a social worker in the community mental health team in central London. At Middlesex, I'm the um, undergraduate year one programme lead, and I'm also the admissions tutor for social work. Um, but I also teach across all of the programmes. So if there are any postgraduate applicants or potential applicants tonight, um, you might well see me um, next year in your MA PG dip and indeed BA modules. So what we are going to cover this evening is some guidance and advice uh, before the interview. So preparing your UCAS application. I'm aware some of you have already attended um, a session um, earlier this afternoon with regards to um, acing your UCAS application. But I want to give you a couple of tips on making your UCAS applications social work uh, specific. Um, we we'll spend some time looking at what to expect um, at, during your social work um, interview at Middlesex and um, some general um, guidance with regards to the social work programs at Middlesex, um, placements, um, and just uh, generally what to expect. But I'm really hoping that we have some time for you to ask questions via the Q&A uh, prompt or, um, or on Zoom. It's not the chat function, it is Q&A. Um, if you have any general questions about the university, the admissions process, um, please do enter them into the chat and we will see if we can respond to them as we go along. Um, any social work specific questions, I will be able to answer at the end of my presentation. So let's make a start by looking at um, the bits you must know before the interview. So bef um, I'm thinking about the stage of, I want to be a social worker, I'm going to make an application, and I think Middlesex is the place to make that application too. So you're probably well aware now, you need to make your um, um, application via UCAS. Um, we don't accept any direct applications. Um, so do make your application for BA Social Work, MA Social Work, PG DIP um, Social Work, um, via UCAS. And we will look at the entry criteria shortly. So with regards to qualifications, we'll come on to very soon. But as you're aware, the personal statement is probably one of the most important aspects of your UCAS application. This is the opportunity to tell us about you, why you want to apply for a social work degree, what will make you a good social work student, um, and some information about um, your, your personal interests and hobbies, et cetera. So this is your opportunity to stand out um, from the crowd. And we really want you to be thinking about your personal statement um, uh, before um, you um, make your decision um, with, with regards to which universities you're going to apply to. So spend some time on your personal statement. Now, you will be aware that there is a deadline coming up um, later on the, uh, of this month to submit your applications. So do bear that deadline in mind whilst taking your time over your personal statement. So in terms of some general tips, please make sure you proofread your personal statement because we are considering the level of literacy 
uh, partly based on your um, qualifications, but also in how you write your personal statement. So when you finish your first draft, take a breather, go back to it the next day, read it out loud and look out for general typos and grammatical errors. Remember you're applying for a, a professional program. Social work is a professional program and we need really good levels of literacy. So the first opportunity we get to see uh, with regards to your literacy will be on your personal statement. So where possible, make sure it is um, a really, really good level of literacy as possible. Some tips, um, re revisiting, spell check, grammar check, but reading it out loud, reading it to someone, asking someone to read it to you, and if need be, using um, software on your computer uh, to read back that statement. And you will notice um, particular errors and, and issues with sentence construction, especially when you hear somebody reading it to you or if you're reading it out aloud. Really make it social work specific. Sometimes we receive applica applications um, from applicants who are still not sure on their career choice and they uh, make a, a generic application because they're considering mental health nursing, nursing, teaching, and social work. And that's fine, we do understand. And many applicants who make these generic applications do come through, are shortlisted um, and um, do well at interview and enroll on the social work program. But we would prefer, prefer if possible, um, considering the professional nature of social work and the unique um, uh, professional career that it is, that you target your personal statement and make it social work specific. So what do I mean by this? So really demonstrate your um, motivations for social work on the personal statement. So in effect, you're telling us why you want to become a social worker. What draws you to the profession? Um, um, as opposed to other helping professions, um, for, for example. What skills and qualities will make you a good social work student? So both academically and in terms of the skills and qualities needed um, for social work practice. Also think about your transferable skills. So this could come from uh, roles that you've undertaken in paid employment, voluntary employment, mentoring, volunteering. Um, it could even be where you've undertaken um, hours on a, on a health and social care placement, where you've acted as a, as a leader in some regards at school or college, um, prefecting, for example. There are lots of ways to, to show us that you have transferable skills from previous careers and from um, your college um, and school um, experiences as well. Lastly, don't forget to tell us about your personal qualities that you think mirror what's needed in, in social work. So um, at a benchmark level, we're, we of course are looking for, for those of you that want to help others, that you have compassion, that you, you are approachable, you are kind, you are caring, but think a little bit more deeper than that. What is it about social work uh, that draws you to the profession that mirrors your personal qualities? Sometimes, some of you may have a, a real desire for equality and, and a respect for diversity or a respect for difference. And um, you may feel um, very passionate about um, the injustices um, in the world or, or that vulnerable people, um, adults and children um, don't have their voice heard. Um, so try and get these um, personal qualities and passions and wishes and wants across on your personal statement. So tell us about your motivations for social work, your transferable skills, either academically and or from paid or voluntary or some other form of, of uh, employment or working with others and your personal qualities. And that really should make your personal statements uh, stand out, grammar and spell check it, redraft it a couple of times. And if you do that, I'm confident you will be shortlisted should you meet the remaining entry criteria. 
So do some preparation. Um, lots of you are here today because you have um, reviewed our websites. Um, so go back to the website. So um, mdx.ac.uk and then follow the prompts to, to the courses that the university offer. Look up, look up social work. And the ones you need to, to be interested in are the BA, MA or PG DIP. Now the MA and PG DIP social work both provide um, a, a social work qualification. And the only difference between the two is that the PG DIP does not um, attract the dissertation module. There is, of course, a price difference between the MA and PG DIP because you are doing with the PG DIP, you're doing one fewer module, you're not doing the dissertation. So do look up the prices as well. But just to reassure you, the PG DIP and the MA are both completed um, uh, on an accelerated path. They're, they're known as a fast track qualification. So whereas most other universities offering an MA or PG DIP social work, um, uh, complete the programs in two academic years, you would complete this um, an MA or a PG DIP in just 17 months. So you will qualify, you will graduate from Middlesex much quicker, much faster than other social work students at other universities. So it's a very attractive, we think it's a, a, a really attractive um, uh, way to complete uh, the programme and we are different to other universities by offering this fast track approach. However, any fast track approach to academic work means you will be completing the study not just quicker than others but more intensively. So you really do hit the ground running right from day one. The undergraduate module, the BA for Social Work, is a traditional three-year module um, and um, very much um, comparable to other universities offering um, undergraduate BA Social Work modules. So the teaching staff, like myself, will teach both on the BA, the MA and the PG DIP Social Work programmes. Go to the website, like I said, and really um, uh, uh, drill down in the website. There's lots of different links to tips and guidance on gaining further information, um, associated reading um, um, uh, with regards to social work. And most importantly, we give you extensive guidance with regards to preparing for interview. So um, we give you adv general advice and tips in terms of how to present yourself at interview, but also some of the tasks that you need to um, complete before the interview. Um, so I just really, um, and I will revisit this in a few minutes, but just really want to emphasise that when you are shortlisted, so you've submitted your UCAS form and you've been shortlisted to attend interview, there will be two pre-interview tasks that you must complete, otherwise the interview can't proceed. And the interview, the pre-interview tasks actually directly link to two of the interview questions. So we're asking you to do some preparation because we're going to ask you at interview about um, those tasks that you under undertook. What are the tasks? Really, they're really simple. It's um, reading a very short chapter from a social work text. Um, it's about seven or eight pages and watching a four or five uh, minute video. And then we will ask you a question about that. So you undertake the task. You're going to be fully prepared for two of the six questions we ask you at interview. So you will really be um, at, an, uh, at an advantage. So just going back to the entry requirements, um, so some of you who are applying for a BA might be completing um, a, an access course, so either an access to higher education or an access to social work. And of course, the benchmark there is that you must pass. And um, on the screen, you'll see some details of what that pass must include with regards to the credits that you will be um, achieving. If you're completing A-levels, we need um, um, the equivalent of BBB. So that's 120 to 128 UCAS points um, from three A-levels. 
lots of our undergraduate BA social work applicants um, are studying uh, or have studied a BTEC extended diploma in health or social care. And the entry requirements there typically are, are a DDM, a distinction, distinction and merit. And so if you're doing the BTEC and you get the DDM, that will reach the UCAS tariff of 120 to 128 points. If you're doing three A levels, three Bs typically will achieve that tariff. And if you're doing the access to social work or access to higher education, the overall pass, um, which includes 45 credits at level three, et cetera, et cetera, will achieve that 120 UCAS point um, tariff. If you're applying for the MA or PG DIP, we need an upper class honours degree. So that's a 2-1. Um, however, we will review um, your UCAS statements carefully if you have um, achieved a, a lower second class, a 2-2. Two, two. Um, however, we really want you to be making it really clear that you have some transferable work experience. So something that has some link to health or social care. So that could be um, volunteering work, working in health and social care, working as a social work assistant, a social carer, um, a domiciliary carer, lots of, of, of ways. It could be um, working in a nursery, working in a school, for, for example, volunteering work. But if you do have a 2-2, do make, uh, do really emphasize your uh, relatable work experience on your UCAS personal statements. I would say the same for those of you with a first class um, honors degree or the upper um, second, the two one, make, make your UCAS statement um, really clear on relatable work experience as well. Sadly, we do not accept um, uh, MAPGD applicants, it, um, if they have achieved a third class honours degree or a pass level, it must be a minimum of a 2-2, preferably a 2-1. Now, for all applicants, BA, MA, PG, DIP, you also must have maths and English GCSE at um, grade C or the new uh, numeric levels, level four. So that's grade C or level four. We do accept equivalent quali qualifications um, of English and maths. So typically that would be functional maths or functional English at level two standard. We also have a very uh, good admissions team that reviews international applications, which we really, really strongly encourage and welcome. You will, you will know that social work is an international career, so we do want international applicants and a very warm welcome to any of you tonight who are considering applying um, outside of the UK. So if you have international qualifications, still make your UCAS application and our admissions team will review them to make sure that they um, are the equivalent of, of maths and English GCSE or um, um, and 120 UCAS points. So the stages for, for the um, application process are the UCAS um, application with that really good personal statement. Um, if you're shortlisted, you are then shortlisted to the interview stage, which we will have a look at now. So, um, like I said before, the interview is the opportunity to meet us face to face. Um, we're, we're continuing with online interviews. We think um, this works uh, well for both applicants and for interview panel members. And we will do this via Zoom, which you all have because you are here on Zoom tonight. So really for the interview, I want you to be thinking about how you can prepare. So I have already said that Middlesex um, social work program pages on the Middlesex website have links to the um, application uh, uh, process and advice and guidance for the interview itself. And you will recall that I said that um, you need to review those pages because there are pre-interview tasks. But really an interview, we need you to get it across to us why you want to study social work, why you want to be a social worker. So I have already given you a tip on what you will be asked. 
Um, it is our first question. Why do you want to be a social worker? Now, really think about that. So the best um, answers are those who consider why they will be a good social worker. Yes, you want to help people. And that that's perfectly fine and acceptable. But go go up another level. What is it about social work um, that draws you to the profession to help people there? Because you can help people, as you know, in nursing, in mental health nursing, in occupational therapy, in medicine, in teaching, as a paramedic, as a police officer, and lots of other professions. So what is it uh, specifically that draws you to social work? So we will probably um, ask you a supplementary question about what what are your specific motivations for the social work profession so have a think about that and undertake um, further reading the best interviewees are those that have prepared well and have undertaken reading so you're demonstrating to us that one you have become prepared two you're organized but three you're showing curiosity about the social work profession and i have a number of links towards the end of this presentation that you can look at um, and make those uh, and, and start to explore social work. But also remember um, the previous slide um, that there is a, uh, a link on the Middlesex Social Work Programme pages to introductory texts. Well, you don't have to read all of them, nor would we expect you to, but read a chapter from one or two of those books and it will um, further prepare you for interview. Because here's another hint. We might well ask you about what reading you have um, undertaken um, ahead of interview. And indeed, that is a pre-interview task. So in terms of the right-hand side of the, the screen, I've, much, I've more or less covered that. Research the profession. If you know a social worker or somebody that works in social services, talk to them. If you don't know somebody, read about social work on community care online. British Association of Social Workers, BASW. Social Work England, the regulatory bod body, that's SWE. And the links are on the futures, uh, on, the, on the slide that, that, uh, that we will see in, in a moment. But we, we are recommending that you familiarise yourself with the role of someone that works uh, directly or indirectly um, with social work. So really get to understand not just what, what makes a good social worker, the qualities and the functions of social work, such as safeguarding and, and advocate, advocating, but what do social workers do on a day-to-day -day basis whilst they um, are visiting people and writing reports what are they actually doing and for now that does include safeguarding and that does include advocating but it also means they are doing home visits they might be preparing a report to court they're writing assessments they're care planning and lots more and the task for you after today is to do that that research so if we look over on the left of the screen again, number three, during the interview across the questions, we want you to be demonstrating some form of understanding of the knowledge and skills required for social work practice. But if you read widely about social work and talk to social workers, you will also gain a sense of some of the issues that surround social work. So what's in the news about social work? What's affecting social work? What are the challenges for social work practice? And for those of you that have been listening, there's another hint. We might, we might just ask you about that. What is affecting? What are the challenges facing social work practice? So after today and doing the pre-interview tasks, um, you should be very well prepared for your social work um, interview. So in broad terms, and don't worry, I'm not going to spend time on each of these what we call domains. Uh, this is the criteria that our interview uh, processes. So both the UCAS application and the interview, these are domains that we are looking for 
in potential social work applicants at an entry level. And for those of you that are in, interested, these uh, concepts and uh, domains will follow you through um, all of your social work education and then when you qualify and beyond. The most important one, I think, that transcends all of these domains is professionalism. So we want you from the very outset um, to, to, be, to, to produce a professional UCAS statement. Like I said, where it looks good, it reads well, it's literate, it has good grammar, and, and it's demonstrating my motivations for social work. It's demonstrating that I have some of the skills required to be a social work student, and it's demonstrating um, some of my personal qualities that, that mirror social work practice. And then for interview, we want you to come prepared. And so when we ask those questions, those two questions about those pre-interview tasks, we want you to be nodding, going, oh yeah, yeah, I, I, I read that chapter. And oh yeah, I, I read that video. And you'll feel really, really confident in answering those questions. That's professionalism. And lastly, um, over the past couple of years since we've been doing online interviews, we've noticed a little bit of a trend where some applicants, um, due to just inexperience, shall we say, um, they don't uh, see an online interview as they do um, face to face like coming onto campus. And we want you to treat an online interview exactly the same as you would be if you were coming onto campus. So what do I mean by that? It means being online for your Zoom link five minutes before the interview starts, for example. It means testing your laptop or computer actually um, has Zoom installed and Zoom works, that your updates have been done before, uh, uh, you know, an hour before the interview rather than one minute before the interview. It means being on time for your interview. It means being in a, in, in a, in a quiet room and not in your car driving. Believe it or not, we've had, we've had some of those. We've had some people walking down the street holding their phone. So the panel have said, you, 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 uh, we're going to suspend the interview. It's not safe, or we can see you can't really focus and concentrate, so you need to rebook. And then that just puts you off. And and so think about how can I be, how can I demonstrate professionalism whilst I'm preparing uh, for my interview, just before my interview and during my interview. Uh, a last tip, believe it or not, I can't, you know, sometimes I, I find myself thinking, um, you know, I have to relay this story, but we have, uh, we've had a number of applicants that have attended interview online wearing a dressing gown in their pajamas, towels on their head. Does that uh, project professionalism? It doesn't. You're, you're applying for a social work program. You're applying for a professional program working with the most vulnerable children and adults in this country. And so professionalism starts at the application and interview stage. So dress like you would do at any other university that you would be going face to face. Obviously, you would not be going to a university on campus interview in your pajamas and dressing gown, would you? Of course not. You dress smart casual. So do that online. And that's all that I will say on that particular issue. So you've heard me refer to personal qualities um, to consider and de demonstrate an interview. This is very subjective. But think about the social work role and what qualities um, that you have that you that would think that you think will make you a good social worker. So being professional is, is one, for example. Think about your communication skills. We want you to be demonstrating that, yes, you are uh, you can answer the questions um relatively well and sometimes we prompt and reframe questions and that's absolutely fine so talking skills are really important but also your non-verbal um uh, your body language 
how is that coming across? Are you going to be like this uh, interview? Are you going to be walking around? Are you going to be driving your car? Or are you going to be in a, in a, in a safe, quiet, calm space with your camera um, and having that, that conversation with, with the panel? Also, your listening skills. Really think, I'm going to listen to those uh, to the interview panellists, their guidance at the beginning. I'm really, really going to take in the questions. Um, if there are supplementary questions or a conversation, really, really listen. Just, so just take a deep breath. We know you're nervous. Pause. Ask for, ask for guidance if necessary. Ask, ask for the question to be repeated. But just demonstrate that you're listening to, to, to your, to your panellists when, when that in, uh, interview. Other personal qualities. Um, we want you to be, um, of course, compassionate and caring. We want you to to come your your genuineness to come through. We want you to be demonstrating that social work is above all the most important uh, 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 program that you wish to study because you care for people. We want enthusiasm and motivation. Think about issues of diversity and equality and links to social work. And if you under, undertake some reading, you'll be more prepared for that. But for now, we want you to be thinking about that social work is working with the most diverse range of people in society. So the most diverse range of vulnerable people in society, both children, adults, and let's never forget their carers as well. You might be wanting to demonstrate on your UCAS statement or an interview um, that you um, uh, are a good team worker. Think of, think of examples, though. Think of an example of where you worked well in the team. What went well? Why did it work well? Think about examples of where you tried to help someone or problem solve. And what did you learn from that process that might help you in social work practice? So think of any example where you helped someone in a voluntary or a paid uh, capacity or at school or at college. How, what did you do succinctly and how do you think that that uh, that could help you in social work practice? What did you learn from that particular experience? Again, you'll see those comments. Read, read, read. The more reading you do before interview the better prepared and the best and you'll put and you'll provide the best interview as well and if you have a question or two we have to limit the time that's absolutely fine but please don't worry if you don't have a question to ask for the panel sometimes we see applicants racking their brains thinking oh I should ask something what what should I ask it's absolutely fine we're not assessing you on whether you have a question the quality of the question or whether you don't have a question. Lots of you attend open days, open evenings, um, events like tonight, and you feel actually quite well informed about the program you're applying for. And that's absolutely fine. You don't have to ask a question. So in terms of transferable skills for your UCAS statement and that interview, uh, here's some examples there that you may, might want to just have a quick read through. Um, I'm not going to read them for you because I'm going to have a sip of my drink. I'm just going to give you a moment to think about these. So you could be thinking about how did I show leadership at school, at college, at my um, during my undergraduate program. Leadership doesn't always have to mean being the boss, managing a team. It can simply mean sharing information with others that might benefit them. And that is a really good example of leadership as, uh, as well. You might feel that your communication skills, listening, non, uh, body language, speaking, um, empathy, there's, there's a very good social work um, skill, is something that you excel at during your uh, in you know with your friends and your family at work at college and you want to get that across in your personal statement or at uh, university um, as well so there's just some examples of transferable skills that you might have do think of some other ideas 
So in terms of, of social work, so um, in, when you are in, when you are working as a social worker and when you are a student social worker, right from day one, you're very much considering the rights, um, strengths and well-being of adults, their carers and, and children. So notice the word strengths there. So yes, we have to be very, very mindful of the risks and the problems and issues and, and um, distress that, that people will experience that you will work with, but we must also focus on their strengths. So have a look up right down now, strengths-based practice. Um, and um, there's some really, really interesting, some really interesting ideas that really now directly inform social work practice. So when you are on placement, your role will be to assess somebody and the risks um, of an issue that they're experiencing, but also what are their own strengths that could help them overcome the problem that they're experiencing. Another core value is um, maintaining, establishing and maintaining the trust and confidence of people. So think about examples where um, you have developed trust and, and confidence of someone who may have been an, initially a little bit wary. What did you do to build that rapport? Usually when we just listen to someone and show empathy, that's uh, normally a very good way to develop trust and confidence of, of, of someone. And just generally, um, social workers must always um, work respectfully. We must be, we must have professional integrity. We must always report concerns when, when, when they arise. Um, and we're guided by the British Association of Social Works Code of Ethics. So I recommend that you access that, that website um, to read about the, the values and ethics that underpin the social work profession, because hint, hint, we might well ask you at interview your understanding of social work values. And we might ask about what, what, what your own values are. What, what belief systems do you hold dear to yourself? What, make, what are you passionate about? So in terms of um, placements, um, when you come to an open day, and there is uh, some information on the last slide of, for when there are BA, uh, undergraduate and postgraduate social work open days and open evenings, we will look at placements in more detail. But for now, just want to give you a, a, an indication of where our placements are, and they are in North London. So be mindful of that when you are making an application because some we, we welcome applicants from all over the country and all over the world, but you will study in Hendon, um, which is in NW4, and your placements will be in Enfield, Barnet, Brent, Haringey, Hackney, Islington, Camden, Westminster, uh, Tower Hamlets, for, for example, in North London. So wherever you live, there will you will have to travel to these placements. So we cannot find a placement for you based on where you live. So um, and there is no uh, way around that. We have um, arrangements with employers. Um, we audit the placements. Um, so don't try and source your own placements because we there are. Um, paid professionals who undertake this role on a full-time basis in Middlesex. So they find the placements and they audit them and make sure that they're social work specific and that you're going to have social work learning opportunities. So we do all of that for you and take all of that pressure off you. But I just want to reinforce the point at this very early stage that should you um, enroll on our BA, MA or PGDIP social work programmes, your placements will be in North London. And we sadly can't find the placements based on where you live. So coming to the end of the presentation, here's some links. Um, I understand you will have access to this presentation. And of course, it's been recorded. Um, there's some a couple of YouTube videos there that you're, you're very welcome to look at. Um, and here's some useful websites to visit. 
So lots of them are health and social care related, but I just want to single, single out a couple for you. So Social Work England, the one at the top. So this is our regulatory body. So social work is a regulated profession and Social Work England have um, approved and validated the BA, MA and PGDIP programmes. So do have a look at uh, this website and you will learn about the professional standards that social workers must um, adhere to when they are qualified. Um, go to the British Association of Social Work, Baswell website. So, uh, so this is the organisation that represents social workers, but also hosts um, uh, the information about, remember the domains, professionalism was one of them. So the, the domains that you must be evidence in when you apply, when you're on placement, when you, when you have qualified. So do read about, uh, go to that website and also with regards to the code of ethics. Um, and lastly, I'm just seeing if it's listed here. I don't think it is. Make a note, um, Community Care Online. So it's an online magazine that focuses solely on the issues surrounding social work practice in the UK currently. So um, you can look up uh, issues relating to adult social work, mental health social work, older adults, learning dis people with learning disabilities, and also issues relating child in need, child protection, um, asylum seekers, people that don't have recourse to public funds, and lots of news stories. The, by reading that uh, now and in uh, be, uh, now and before your interview, you will be become very well prepared with regards to the issues and trends in social work at the moment. Um, so have a look here in terms of the next open day. Do check the Middlesex uh, website just for any updates on the dates. Um, and um, there are campus tours later on this week um and further resources there so i'm just going to um stop the share and we will come to q a thank you for your time so far thank you so much for that matthew it was so informative there was so much information in there so hopefully lots of you got to take away loads of great information and what you need to do and how you need to prep for your interview we have a couple of questions in the Q&A button. So um, I'm happy to read them out if that's all right. Yeah, please do, please do, Anjali. Um, So someone has said, do all applicants get asked to go for an interview? Uh, so your short answer is no. Um, it's a short list in process. Um, so you apply via UCAS um, and if you're shortlisted, you will be invited to interview. So um, we receive, um on average uh, just shy of a thousand applications each year um, for all three programs so the BA, MA and PG DIP and remember the MA and PG DIP are taught together except for the dissertation module um, and on average we have about 50 to 60 places for the BA and the MA PG DIP so competition is is uh, very high so the starting point for you, as I said, is to make that personal statement really, really stand out to give you the best opportunity to be shortlisted. And then the next stage is the interview. Thank you for that. Um, so this one's an entry requirements one. So I'm not sure if we will be able to answer it. But for entry requirements, what are the requirements for someone studying health and social care level three extended certificate and two A levels? Um, well, my understanding is that the BTEC Health and Social Care um, ex Extended uh, is sufficient. Um, the Studying alongside the two A-levels is, is a bonus, but you would need to achieve a distinction, distinction merit in your Health and Social Care BTEC. Um, and just doing that on its own would um, achieve the UCAS tariff of 120 to 128 points. So it's great that you might be doing, an, if we've read that right, and an additional two A-levels. But doing two A-levels on its own wouldn't be enough. You need three A-levels, broadly BBB. 
um, you're going to have more than enough credits, uh, UCAS points by doing both the BTEC and the A levels, and and that's absolutely fine. So I hope that answers that question. Thank you. Um, what examples of questions that some applicants ask at interview? Um, sometimes um, applicants uh, ask about where placements are. Um, sometimes um, postgraduate applications ask about applicants ask about the differences between the MA and the PG dip. Um, but really, that it's unique uh, to them. Like I said. Don't worry if you don't have a question. Don't feel you just have to make up some kind of question. You, you don't have to have to ask. Um, but if you do have a question, we will do our best um, to, to answer it. Um, normally, we can only um, receive about one or two questions because we try and give an equitable amount of time to each applicant during an interview and we have a, have a schedule to, to run to. OK. Um, hopefully we do get an offer after the interview, but if we don't, is it possible to still um, get some feedback on why we didn't get a place? Uh, yes. Um, so feedback is via UCAS. So um, in terms of the outcome of your interview, normally seven to 10 days, sometimes sooner. So um, after, a, after your interview, um, after a week, check your UCAS um, account and this applies to any university and any program that you apply for and you will see the outcome of, of your interview if if you are sadly not offered a place um, you can get in touch with Middlesex admissions and then they will get in touch with the interview panel because we do provide some uh, feedback or to justify uh, why an offer wasn't made and um, and it's constructive feedback so we would give some advice should the applicant get in touch um, as to what they could do to improve their interview should they reapply so that could be uh, undertaking further reading for example relating to the social work profession or being more articulate in demonstrating their motivations for applying for social work along those uh, so feedback would be along those uh, those lines okay thank you so regarding the entry requirements question we had earlier so the health and social care is a BTEC which is equivalent to one A level and then that person's also doing the two A levels um, separately. So they'd have three A levels in total. So that hopefully should mean that depending yeah. on the grades. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the tariff is 120. So you can go, I, I'm, I'm assuming nothing has changed on the UCAS website, but they have like a tariff calculator. So you can put in your predicted grades for uh, with a combination. So you could say your two A levels, BB, for example, and then your predicted grade for that for that um, BTEC, and then that will tell you how many points um, that would achieve. And then assuming it's 120 or, or above, then um, go ahead. Otherwise, just get in touch with Middlesex Admissions directly and they'll be able to tell you as well. How long are the interviews? So we, we normally book um, applicants in for half an hour slots. Um, so the uh, we have a preamble just to check in with the applicant and, and tell them how the interview uh, uh, um, will be structured. And then there's a space at the end of the, towards the end of the interview to talk about placements. Um, a very important issue, um, a declaration of suitability form. You don't have to worry about that now, but it's a form that you must complete and, and ideally submit before interview. Um, but all in all, we, we would probably be with you for about 25 minutes. Sometimes that might be a little bit longer or a little bit shorter, but 25 to 30 minutes in total. Um, for the MA, does the previous degree need to have been obtained within the last five years? So yeah, ideally. So because this is um, study at MA PG DIP, which is level seven, remember this is one level below a PhD. Um, so it's at a very high academic level and this is a fast track. So an accelerated program. 
um, we're different to other two year programs that it, it's you start and you, you're studying and undertaking modules straight away. You're going out to placement in November. It's full time nine to five. We do want applicants that have had some uh, recent uh, um, academic study, such as uh, an undergraduate degree within the past five years. However, you know, if it's something like six or seven years and you have some relatable social work experience, we're not going to rule you out. Um, we're, we, we just have to review that uh, a little bit more, uh, closely. So if you have studied more than five years ago, but have been working in social care, health and social care, social work, um, do make an application and our admissions team will review that closely. Um, which questions tend to be the hardest at interview? I'm not seeing that one. Where did you see that one? Well, it's what are the questions that cause the most problems, but I presumed that's what they were. Oh, I see. OK. <laughs> um, it, it, all of them, if you haven't prepared, that that's like my politician's answer, because if you've if you've prepared, prepared for interview, like like I've said, by reading the general guidance and advice and, and feeling relatively settled, everyone's going to feel anxious a little bit, but being on time, undertaking the tasks, undertaking the reading and being clear in your mind why you want to do social work, you, you will be OK. Um, but to, well, I'm just thinking specifically, sometimes some applicants are reluctant to talk about their own personal be beliefs and values because they might feel what they say might uh, prejudice them against social work. Sometimes I, I would say all of us have different values and beliefs that sometimes don't necessarily mirror the profession. And what we need to do is be very mindful that we might have a different opinion or belief to somebody that we're working alongside or somebody we're working for, say, a, a service user or client. And we need to adopt a, a, a professional approach. But social work is very much reflective and we need you to be reflective even at the interview stage. So don't be afraid to tell us about yourselves um don't don't be guarded don't be closed off yes be professional be prepared research the profession but also let us in a little bit and show us a little bit about yourselves um and uh, because we want you to we want to know that uh we can work with you and that you're going to be open to working with other professionals and that you're going to be open when working with with service users uh, as well so I can't really um, spend too much time on that because I could spend do a whole lecture on it. But the short answer is um, just be honest and just talk um, when if and when you are asked about something about of a personal nature. Don't worry. You know, it's confidential within the confines of the interview. Do, do let us know a little bit about about yourself, because knowing about yourself is is central to social work practice. Thank you for that. And hopefully that also answers the question, what kind of person would do well in an interview as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So going back to the pre-interview tasks. Um, so you all have heard me talk about this lots of times. Um, admissions will prompt you to do that shortly before the interview, but you know this now. So if for any reason uh, uh, admissions haven't directed you to the pre-interview task, you need to think, well, my interview is coming up in four or five days. And I remember this guy at Middlesex was talking about the pre-interview task. Get in touch with us and we, we will show you where they are if, if you if you haven't found them. And like I said, it's reading a short chapter and watching a very brief video. Um, and also being honest and expressive about your own about yourself, you should be you should do okay. Um, someone else has also asked how many people are usually shortlisted from the initial applicants. Um, I don't I don't know to to tell you the truth. Um, it's 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 difficult to say. Some days we shortlist almost everyone and then uh other other days we're shortlist shortlisting say 70 percent uh seven out of ten attended it really really does um vary so we want everyone who comes to interview to be shortlisted we don't have quotas we want 
people to come to Middlesex and study social work. So if everyone um, in December, January and February um, shortlisted their interview and that meant we could close social work on UCAS, we would be delighted to do so. So don't worry about who gets shortlisted and numbers and, and statistics. Just do the best interview. Um, apply now get an early interview, um, do the best interview and secure your place. And that would be the best advice I can give. Um, I'm not sure if this would happen, but say if all the interview sessions are booked up, what would I do? Um, admissions will get onto the academic <laughs> team to provide more slots. So sometimes that happens. It's a very busy period at the moment um, because there's the first UCAS deadline uh, coming up I think on the 25th of January or around that time but it, it it's okay if for example you get your UCAS application in later this month um, and we offer you an interview in February there are further UCAS deadlines we want people to be applying now though this is the best time to do so um, so get your applications in now um, and if we don't offer you an interview straight away we will do so um, very shortly afterwards um so this one's kind of a two-part question so can someone with a bachelor's degree in public health from the university of ghana um have a chance to study an ma in social work um so the answer is yes anyone from anywhere in the world can apply um as, as long for, for an ma or pg dip as long as they have a good undergraduate degree equivalent ideally to an upper second class um, but like I said, we can accept lower second class two twos as long as there is some uh, relatable work experience. Our admissions team would be looking at the international qualification and, and they will determine whether it meets um, the Middlesex social work entry criteria equivalents. Um, so I would say make the application. Um, and then admissions, if there are any questions, admissions will get in touch about your your academic transcript or, or certificate, whatever the issue might be. We have lots of international applicants every year and many of them are successful. The next stage after interview is an offer. So an offer will be made via UCAS. Um, and then that's subject to further qualification checks. So some of you might still be studying. So come July, August, we would need to confirm your qualifications. We might need to um, uh, review and tidy up any outstanding references. And there may be some issues about suitability. Sometimes uh, an applicant has uh, disclosed a, 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 an issue, say uh, a past caution with the police or conviction. That's absolutely fine. You have to, to be honest in social work. And we just have to go through a process to make sure uh, that you're suitable uh, for social work. Most people who have some kind of issue in the past have su still successfully enrolled. So don't try and hide anything because we need uh, social work applicants to be uh, honest right from the, the very beginning. Um, yeah. Um, so we've got three more questions. Um, so how many questions are usually asked for an MA interview? So um, for all of our applicants, MA, PG Dip, BA, we have six questions. So uh, you've heard me heavily hint what some of those might be. And two of the uh, questions are directly linked to the pre-interview tasks. So uh, there's a reading task and there's a video task, and we will ask you a question about that, about that, those particular tasks that you've done. So um, a third of the interview, you will already know what to expect. So two of the two out of those six questions, you will know what to expect. And I've also talked to, to you about uh, demonstrating uh, really, really well your motivations for social work. So why social work and not other helping professions, but why social work and the issues and challenges affecting social work. And I've talked about values and your own values. So you you should be after tonight quite well prepared for, for what to expect at interview. Well, I know I am and I'm not. <laughs> Um, how many days a week is the placement and is it paid for? Um, so we provide the placements. They're in North London, as I said. 
if you're an undergraduate, your first placement is in the second year, and that would be for three days per week. And in your final year, in year three, that would usually be four days a week. And the other day of the week will be at university. And if you're a postgraduate social work applicant, your first placement will be in November this year and your, <laughs> um, for 70 days. And your second placement for 100 days would be in April 2024. Um, and again, the first placement is typically three days on placement and then two days at university, and then the 100 day placement, um, the second placement is typically four days on placement and one day at university. Following normal, typical office hours, nine till five, Monday to Friday, never at the weekend. And sadly, they are not paid for, um, but um, we find them for you. Um, how soon do you get an interview after applying? Um, relatively soon. Uh, admissions are probably best to answer that question. But really, the, um, as soon as you get your application in, um, shortlisting, a shortlisting process is undertaken. Um, I, I don't know, but it, it, I assume it would be within two to three weeks. But I might be wrong on that. Um, is there anything else that you can do to your UCAS application to make it better? This person is currently doing a level three BTEC in health and social care. So alongside making it really, really clear that you meet the entry qualification um, uh, requirements, um, make sure you've got a good academic reference um, and most importantly, your personal um, statement. So your motivations for social work what uh transfer what transferable skills you might have that will make you a good social work student both academically and in practice and um your personal qualities um you know what 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 personal qualities do you have that you think mirror social work and and also something about yourself it's always interesting to read you know your hobbies and interests voluntary work paid employment etc and last question, what is the key difference <laughs> between social work and social welfare? Well, I don't know if this is a, an international applicant asking. Um, and there's another question coming through. Um, I would say for now, I would say that they're, they're in, interlinked. Um, uh, social welfare is something that you will be dealing with on a day to day basis within uh, UK based um, social work issues of welfare are intrinsically linked um, to social work. Um, there's a school of, so of social work that is very much about anti-poverty based um, social work. We also have very strong uh, themes running through our education and practice about anti-discriminatory social work to promote the welfare um, of, of service users. So I hope that's answered that kind of almost lecture type question. <laughs> I might have not hit the mark there, but the short answer is the two are very much linked together. Okay, and if I don't meet the entry requirements, is it possible to be offered a place on another course? Um, I um, That might be something that I, let me think about that. Uh, the social work uh, team wouldn't make that decision. So if you didn't make the entry requirements, the admissions team would uh, tell you uh, um, you hadn't, but you would be very much welcome to um, approach admissions um, or attend an open day for other programs to to see with, uh, the what qualifications you do have, whether they match another program. And admissions would would certainly support you um, with that process. Thank you. Um, okay, one last question. Um, I have got a MVQ level three, currently studying health and social care, which I've completed at level four and five. Can I switch over to social work? You would need to check with admissions on that. You're welcome to email me directly. Um, I think my email address was on the um, our education liaison. Let's type in. Normally, we don't accept NVQ as a as as part of our entry uh, conditions. Um, so it's BTEC access um, A levels for for example. Um, but uh, do get in touch with admissions if they don't answer you here. 
So is that, are you writing an answer there, Angela? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to just pop in the link to the course page. And then from there, hopefully there's like a little bot that you can ask these types of questions to that go straight to the admissions team. And yeah. they'd hopefully be able to answer it a bit more thoroughly than we can over here. Yeah, so sorry, Mary, we can't answer that directly. But NVQ typically is, isn't um, part of the entry criteria, but I'm not 100% certain. Um, I think that's all the questions. So thank you so much, Matthew. That was really, really informative. Um, I know that I've gotten a lot out of it. So thank you so much. Um, to everyone, thank you so much for joining us. The recording of this will be sent to you on Monday. So you can always watch it back, especially when you are prepping for your social work interviews. So thank you very much, Anjali, and thank you to everyone who, who came tonight. Um, we really appreciate your time and your interest in, in social work at Middlesex. Like I say, apply now, um, take your time over the personal statement, and we look forward to reviewing your applications. And thank you for your great questions. That you know, really, really good questions. Thank you, everyone, and hope you. you all have a lovely evening. Take care, everyone. Thanks, Anjali. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.